Welcome to the Daybird Friday. My name is Michael Schimke. I'm the CEO of Scafree. We have the session here every Friday, 11 o'clock Central European Standard Time, to allow you, the audience, to ask questions about data to know, um, any data-driven solutions, data-driven technologies, cloud technologies. And um, yeah, if you, you can use essentially the, the, the chat here in the client to raise a question. You can use the Q&A function in the client. Raise your hand if you want and you get voice. Don't misuse that. Or use a form, which I show you after today's session how you can submit questions essentially on the, on the form. Um, if you receive multiple questions, I will be cherry picking. Um, yeah, uh, that's what it is. And um, it's time box. So it's a roughly 10 minute, 15 minute video. So if you submit questions, make sure it's not a full review of a data vault model, right? With hundreds of entities. Um, it should fit on an HD screen and should be answered in 10, 15 minutes roughly. All right, and if there will be no questions at all, I will talk about cluster here, my, my side project. So we are sitting in the basement of my house um yeah that's my my little hobby project here um but yeah we got enough questions so far so um let me just share today's question in a second so this is about uh, the data mesh and data vault and um essentially how to um uh, deal with raw data and information in the scenario so let me just uh, go to the question first before I, I say something about it um, in a data mesh federation approach, can you share the raw data vault or the business vault across the enterprise, or the share only happens in the information mart? I believe it may happen some raw data vault tables of data domain to be joined with raw data vault of another data domain. Yes, fully agree. So the thing is this, in, when you look at the data mesh theory, it's all about, um, let's say, data products and data contracts, and, and we build something here in this, in this, in this, um, in this domain and, and share it, essentially. Great idea. I love it. I love the fact that um, you... First of all, distribute your solution because I I really like distributed solutions for that reason, and um, the like the citizenship that's that's uh, essentially the the ownership of the data of the processing essentially is in the domain. That's that's why I love so distributed efforts, distributed uh, scenarios. That's great. On the other hand, what I what I miss in in the data mesh is the distinction between data. And information. I mean, it's called data mesh, but you share some results from processing, right? So, in, from a data world perspective, that's information. So, we th th there's this distinction missing between um, between the data itself and the information. Well, if you look at the theory by itself, the idea would now. So, let's let's say we stick to the data mesh. In this case, you would have a uh, essential data product that. So, in order to deliver some raw data. Well, that must be defined by the data contract. So the data product would be based on raw data, essentially. I would document that and provide it. That's the basic idea. Um, what we do with clients, how, what we recommend to clients, essentially, is something a bit, uh, essentially using data vault for the data mesh. And that's uh, quite interesting. Let me just share it to you guys. Um, no. Let's think about this. We have the enterprise data was, right? Let's say a centralistic, central uh, enterprise data was with the the two layers, some staging, logical staging, right? So some data lake maybe used for staging, and you have the raw data vault. Maybe some business vault as well, right? And then the idea now is, in a more simple term, the information mart is an interface to downstream applications. And we even use the term interface mart a lot. So when uh, we, we call it an information mart when a user uses the information more or less directly via some dashboarding tool. And we call it an interface mart if some sub, uh, some downstream application is consuming the results from the data warehouse, from the information mart, essentially, but not a user directly. It goes through an application and it gets further processed, essentially. We call it an interface mart. So you could come up, you get the idea that a an information mart becomes, or some interface mart becomes a data product or an information product. It's called information product. And it's just essentially interface math in this technology, which is in the end very simple, but it's centralized, right? But well, data vault can be essentially used in a distributed fashion as well. And we use it with many clients already. Um, it starts with the hybrid architecture where you have a data lake for processing the unstructured data and a more um, relational technology, let's say Snowflake, Synapse, uh, Hive Manage or something for processing the more structured data. Um, but we also have customers where they where they have multiple um, data vaults and maybe with, and whole infrastructures, right? For whole um, uh, the enterprise that was or the, the database essentially based on data vault on a, on a more department level, for example. So why don't we just create per domain this design? 
So uh, essentially, I'm specifying a bit the how we build the data products here. And those components here, this is not a big deal here. Um, I mean, this the 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 raw the, the data layer essentially is not a big deal. It can be very small use cases. You stage the data you need. You break it apart into um, the data vault entities the, the, in the raw data vault. You attach the business logic that you need in the business vault, and then you build your data products. That's a DP, right? Yeah, that's DP for sure. Trust me. So, okay. Um, and then you build your data products. So this is essentially by, split by domain. And the, the so it's a little more one. Now, if you want to get access to it on the raw data level, well, you can in data vault. So you could, for example, if you have permission, and typically users have these permissions, to access the raw data layer. I mean, you want, really want to secure the raw data layer. I mean, we discussed this in training, how we secure a raw data layer using um, role level security, column level security, satellite split, and so on, right? So you want, to, you want to certainly have that one. But once you have security in the raw data vault and all the subsequent layers in the business vault, information maps, you can certainly have power users, data scientists accessing the raw data layer. Um, and then you could essentially join, if you have access to two data domains, for example, you could join entities from here with entities from here, essentially or with, with business world entities and so on. So there could be a, a reasonable join to build another data product. So let's say you're consuming this, this data here from the marketing domain and the sales. You're consuming this data from different domains to produce your data product in marketing, for example. That's absolutely reasonable. Um, all right, so, so that's the design we essentially, um, essentially recommend to clients, to have a distinction between um, data and information and to use this blueprint, how we build an enterprise data warehouse as a blueprint, how we build a data product. Because think about this, if you leave it to the, to the domains to build the product by themselves, well, first of all, um, I'm not sure if that's a good idea because if you start distributing responsibilities, you also want to standardize. Without standards, it becomes chaos. Think about this, you have a car right? and you're building, you're building cars, not just one car, you're building cars. And from the outside, it looks all great. Right, because it's all looks all the same, more or less, because there's an interface defined. That's how a car looks like. But once you open up the engine compartment, you look at the engine, and everybody built the engine differently. Complete. There's no design, no blueprint, because you left it to them essentially to build an engine. Well, every engine will be different. And if 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 the engineers who built the engine or who, who who built the whole car are leaving the firm, well, hopefully you have the documentation for this, right? So having standardization under the hood is actually of advantage for at least on an enterprise level, at least in our opinion. So that's the that's a pattern how we build data products in a highly distributed data world environment, which becomes a data mesh more or less. So that's the basic idea. The other question is, what if you start consuming data products into, into here? That's essentially a so couple, of, couple of ideas. You could, and they are true for a data world design as well. If you have distributed enterprise data systems or components of the enterprise data was, you could join on the information mark level. So you could take the facts from here and join with the dimension from here. If you have access to both domains, to, the, to these different data products. Um, I'm struggling a bit with recommending to, so that, that would be my preferred option, to be honest, um, joining on the information level and also consider managed services BI, where you can also access data from the raw data vault, Resource from your business logic in the business vault and information from the information marts to build your own solutions, essentially. Um, well, I'm struggling with this recommendation to consider the information marts here as a new data source for the next component, essentially, for the next domain, let's say. Um, because I'm not a big fan of, of essentially having this these um, these... I like to have a data flow where it, it goes all the way downstream. So if you look at this one here, it all goes this way. That's nice. So I can join different flows, either on a data level or on the information level, but that would be my preferred choice. Um, going back and forth in a in a point-to-point um, -point solution, that kind of stuff, I'm not a big fan of that. So it's it's becomes I, I like it better if it's, it's if it's a data flow, essentially always going downstream. That's my preferred design from a from a data processing perspective, essentially. Um, yeah, that's how we organize essentially the data mesh in organizations when they want to use data vault for establishing a pattern how you build your data products. That's the basic idea, essentially. So in my opinion, I like a lot of, a lot of ideas and a lot of concepts from the data, me from data mesh, you know, from data vault. And um, so, yeah, for me, it's, it's not a, um, let's say, a competing approach. For me, it's really um, a approach that I like to support. I like distribution. 
And, um, but again, I would like to have also patterns how we build these products. That's the, that's the basic idea. Cool, good question. Um, I hope that answers it, actually. Uh, let me just uh, not end. I have to share my screen again, sorry for that. Yeah, good question. If you have a question like this, um, I'll show you in a, in a second the form before we, yeah, this one here. So the URL HTTPS SFR.ee slash DB Friday. That's where you can submit your questions essentially, upload some pictures if you want, uh, team pictures, whiteboard pictures maybe, um, up to you. Everything that fits on an HD screen essentially for good uh, videos essentially for sharing. And um, check out scalefree.to slash webinars where we also have uh, additional webinars on DBT and Wearscape at the moment. So that hopefully there will be more soon uh, as well, but that's essentially a monthly webinar um, that we also produce. Um, and check out DVIC, that's the Data World Innovators Community that we set up with Ignition um, in Australia. Um, yeah, it's essentially, uh, we're a founding member and uh, we're, we're pushing this community at the moment. We can also, also ask questions, we can check out some um, uh, marketing materials like um, <laughs> white paper, sorry, white paper success stories and so on. But uh, also there's a lot of forms in there so you can you can use those for ask questions. And there's a lot of people essentially available already from Scalefree, from Ignition to answer your questions essentially. Cool. And I have a monthly call with them as well to discuss questions in the community as well. All right, cool. Thanks for joining today. And um, yeah, enjoy your weekends and see you hopefully next Friday, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks for joining today. If you'd like to discuss this further, give us a call on the number below here and we're happy to discuss this with you. See you next time. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.